go ahead. Uh, well, uh, uh, Coach, uh, just first of all, uh, Dylan Farr started the, uh, the whole game uh, a couple weeks ago. Can you just talk about the quarterback situation as you see it right now? Right. Well, you know, we feel like uh, against it was Arkansas with, with their fronts and a different thing for coverage that, uh, that you know, Dylan's skill set gave us, uh, that was the game plan, okay, for that game plan. For, for that particular game was Dylan and his mobility. Uh, you know, can't promise you that's going to be the way this week. Because uh, every week we'll try to attack differently with what we think our strengths are. Uh, but he'll certainly play whether or not he'll start. I'll be able to know that probably about Thursday afternoon after we have a good week of practice and if we continue to game plan and get our get ourselves uh, you know, ready for this week. Do you think that plays in your advantage? The fact that you know teams that you do play aren't necessarily sure who you're going to play. Whether yeah, I mean, I don't know if it works to our advantage, but uh, you know that's the hand that you're dealt and. Uh, you know, so we're gonna make it to be our, our advantage because we got two guys that can play, and uh, and you know, and it, both of them got different skill sets. Now you try to run the same plays that you do because you don't have two different total offenses. Uh, but you know, Jerry would, would rather throw a ball, but he could move, and then Dylan like you know, be able to run a little bit more. Uh, but there are some downfalls to that because uh, you know there would be some things that uh, that Jared you, you need to get repped in practice and different throws that he can make that. Uh, Maybe uh, uh, you know Dylan's better or some other things. So uh, there's some, there's pros and cons both ways. I mean, are you satisfied with what, the way the offense has produced so far? No, not really. I mean, as a coach, you never you, you know you never are. But uh, no, anytime you've only got 300 something yards, I mean that, that's that's you know in today's college football, that's not that's not what you're looking for. We left a few plays out there on the field. Now some of it, look at myself in the mirror, got a little bit. Uh, uh, gun shot in the second half and make sure that we allowed our defense to win the game. Uh, you know, but that goes back, like I feel those quarterbacks, you got to continue to perform and I got to be able to trust you and, and, and let you make some throws, uh, you know, when we do have a lead and, and, and not worry about the turnover. So, uh, you know, and as we, you know, as we continue to, to, to go forward, that those things will have to take place. When using two quarterbacks, uh, you know, it's a to do that this week. Uh, what uh, responsibilities fall to some of the other guys as far as handling that or just? Responsibilities too, like to the, you know the running backs, receivers. They have to make any particular adjustments uh, uh, to help you know, that process. Um, you know what that offensive line wants. I mean, they know that um, you know Dylan's going to run around, and uh, you know going to be some more scrambles. I mean, uh, they're, they're, they're just is. So that's I don't know if they adjust anything for that. They probably they probably appreciate not giving up any sacks. You know that way. Uh, wide receivers with Dylan's in there. Uh, you know you got to keep your routes alive. You got to be able to pay attention to scramble drills and, and get some separation, and, and uh, you know, and you can help him make some plays down the field. And you know, then when Jared's in there, just like any other drop back guy, you got to make sure you run you know, precise routes, and you get open, you get separation, because he can certainly deliver the football to him. You know, being two and one uh, at, at the bye. I mean, was this kind of that kind of the best case scenario considering the schedule that y'all were playing two ranked right. teams? You know. Uh, I mean, it was one of the scenarios, and there was many scenarios to choose from, and and uh, you know there was there were, could have been you know could have been um, schedule we played right. You could still have a good football team and, and, and be looking at a lot worse record than we have right now. So uh, yeah, you know, as we talked to our team yesterday about you know this kind of preseason, okay, same thing that uh, uh, other teams in this league are saying, especially our opponent this week. Hey, that's preseason. The conference is what counts. Those wins only help you at the end of, at the end of the year through the conference race. We're, we're very well aware of that. Uh, you know, you lose this week, and uh, you know Southeast Missouri is one and zero in the conference, and you're zero and one. And nobody remembers those first two weeks. So we'll, you know, we're, we're certainly um, you know, taking you know this game as a Super Bowl to us. It's the playoffs because it is to get yourself in, in, in the direction you need your you, know, you need your season to go. What was the point of emphasis uh, in the bye? Many of them. There was many of them. One was uh, always get your young players a lot of work. Have you evaluate for, for what you're going to recruit and sign at, at, uh, in December. Uh, the next thing was, you know, we needed to be able to uh, work on our throwing game. I think we've been okay in the running game. We need to continue to improve our throwing game. Uh, defensively, um, you know, just need to continue to sure up some coverage things. I mean, there's some things when we have been giving up some big plays. It's been uh, you know, some breakdowns here, uh, here or there. So, you know, a multitude of things, but those are the main things you want to get the young kids. Uh, offensively, our throwing game, and defensively, our, our coverages. When you uh, set this, when y'all set the schedule up, I guess, 
is it beneficial for you the fact that your buy comes right before y'all start conference? So, like you said, I mean, these are the games that yeah. really count. Uh, you know, it, it is this week. It is this week. In the weeks to come, it's it, you know, you wish you had that that bye week because we go uh, two Saturday games, uh, two conference Saturday games, and a quick Thursday game on the road. Uh, you know, so these you, you, our schedule kind of broke down in in segments. These the first three games that we play, and then these three which is three conferences, but one of them's on the Thursday night, and it's on the road. So that's how we plan it out, and you get through these three games, and then you regroup as you get, you know, as you make your run in October, and you try to finish in November. Coach, you talked about a couple of the things that you've been working on in the bye week, some of the things that concern you. Any one concern you more than uh, anything else? Uh, no, not necessarily. I mean, uh, the throwing game is, is a concern of mine. I mean, we, we're we not used to, you know, not having 35, 40. 40 throw. You're not used to throwing for under, under 200 yards. Now each team, there's different ways to win, uh, but there's going to come there's going to come a time where, I mean, you know, you're going to miss some tackles. Uh, the guys are going to, you know, they're going to score points. If you're going to score in the 30s against you, you got to be able to match that. You can't always do that running, running the football. Plus, right, you, you're able to throw the football and it opens up the running game as well. So uh, that was the main emphasis for me as the head coach, and offensive coordinator, to make sure that we improved our, our, our passing game this week. What's your strategy for developing that here in the next uh, couple weeks? Yeah, you know, it's just it's just combination of just doing it. Uh, you know, when I when I just get more reps in practice, um, you know, that just get, getting Dylan more comfortable. You know, Jared's been in this you know system for two years. And, you know, just him being accurate with his throws. Uh, you know, combination of things. Is uh is there does the familiarity with the playbook have anything to do with it, or is it more just uh, both? Like, both. Bit. Yeah, you know, when you've heard the, the name of a play, you know, uh, 10 times compared to 75 times, right, then that, that slows you down a little bit. When you've seen it versus multiple coverages, you know, 30 times during practice, you're going to, you know, see those reads a little bit better. Uh, you know, so it, it's a, you know, it's no, it's no secret when you're dealing with player repetition, it's going to make you better. Uh, and that's what it goes back to when you're working two quarterbacks. Uh, you know, you're trying to split those reps, so that can, can be one of the uh, obstacles to overcome. Is to, you know, is to, you know, Derek Carr got every rep for 30 years, just about, and you know, for the most part, except for he got 90% of reps in practice, and uh, and it becomes second nature to you. You talked about uh, you know, other teams' offenses scoring 30 points in a week. Do you think that there's not as much of an emphasis on defense, especially because you know, I guess the stat, the stats from last year from all the OBC defenses, they were pretty, pretty right. low. Do you think that that's just, a, you know, a change in the times, I guess, or is it just a little bit? Di is it just different? An offense, the defense is two things. Play. One, I think, change of the times, big plays. You know, on offense, you scheme big plays. You don't just get, you know, five yard plays anymore. You're looking for 35 yard plays and touchdown plays. And also the quarterbacks are different this year in the league. You got EIU, who's you know still on the four hundred something uh, a game, and none of the rest of us have got that luxury of having you know that guy with experience, you know, besides that kind of talent that that Garoppolo has. So um, it, it's a combination of things this year, and the senior quarterback and then changing the offensive football. What have, have you have you had a chance to watch uh, film on Semo yet, uh, and oh, yeah. what they showed? Uh, at Bush Stadium, that they uh, trying to get a little passing game going. Yeah, well, um, you know, yes. I mean, and they uh, uh, that that's a little bit different to see in some of Coach Samuel's uh, you know offenses in the past. Uh, you know, they're usually pretty balanced, more run oriented and stuff. So that was a new wrinkle for them, and uh, did a nice job of it. Uh, but the thing that I uh, um, that I saw the most though, was their improvement on defense from uh, from game one to now, and every week they've gotten better. And getting lined up and keeping things in front of them, and they're making you grind out some drives. And you know, by no means are any of us perfect, but if you make a team go 10 to 12 plays, usually somebody's gonna mess it up. And you know, it's hard to score over 24 or 26 points when you're making a team drive the ball and uh, and, and execute, you know, and, and not busting coverages and missing tackles because there's too much space, too much space and stuff. So, um. So that was the main thing I've saw the uh, much improvement on, on their defense, and uh, you know we, we've never. You go back and look at our scores against South Missouri, our our, our our close games, our tight games. They're, they're, you know, uh, we won by ten last time we were up there. We lost by seven the time before that we were up there. So it's it's a little four games. Coach, you talked about the 
Coach, if you look at SEMO statistically, and you mentioned the improvement they've made, but defensively they've given up a lot of rushing yards. So far that's been a strength for you guys offensively. Would it be kind of uh, jumping the gun a little bit to see that as maybe an area you guys can exploit to some degree? Right. Well, it's, it's you know, they're, they're a too high safety team, you know, so they're not going to give you the deep throw down the field. They match those really well, and they're leaving six guys in the box, okay? That's, you know, that's what we're saying before this, is that, you know, they're going to force you to run the football, and then, Move their front around up front, and you know you, you miss tackles, things you know a lot of muddy runs, and you know get you to you know third medium, and then you know, get their defense off the field. So you know I, I think you go into each week with you know try to be as balanced as you can, and, and, and as the game goes, you try to figure out ways to um, move the football. How would you compare their defensive strategy to maybe what Chattanooga did that first week? Uh, similar, uh, I, I would say it's kind of similar, but they do a lot more movements up front, which makes it difficult to. Uh, you know, um, sustained blocks up front. They kind of, you know, you, you get a little bit frustrated and make you throw the football because of all the different movements up front. And, uh, you know, then all of a sudden there's two high safeties over the top of everything and, uh, you know, really no place to throw the ball down the field. We struggled against them last year. You go back, as good as we were offensively, we were coming off that, uh, you know, big game offensively against Murray. And, uh, you, you know, we, car, that was probably car statistically worst game. I think we threw for 160 some yards. Okay, and uh, we we'll scored 20, 27. 27 points uh, last year, and we had, you know get, had to get interceptions to kind of. So you know they do a good job of taking away what you want to do and make you get something else. Last question for you for me, Coach. Uh, you know, we were talking, you asked uh, Ryan about the the polls before they were coming out. Uh, you ranked 27th, and the coaches uh, kind of got to give a little laugh, I guess. Uh, what do you think about the fact that you know here you are, the two teams that y'all played, and and you're level they're ranked and you right. beat them and right. coaches are still giving you love. Well like I said I, I know you know a lot of coaches are, are busy and sometimes they're SID uh, you know vote, vote for them and uh, you, you know but uh, it, it's kind of I don't lose any sleep over it but it is interesting to just check it out and, and see because it doesn't matter now but it can matter you know seven or eight weeks down the road uh, you know, when you get to the season uh, it can matter especially if you're chasing that large bid okay but it, you know, a few more wins will take care of that, and then you'll have an opportunity to uh, you know, see where you are. Coach, I just want to ask you one more thing about offense. A couple weeks ago, we talked about you know how you know Jeremy Butler obviously was a, a major target for you guys, and he's going to continue to be. Um, how have you how would you assess the development of some of the other receivers into the offense? Right. Well, I, you know they're old guys. I mean, Chris Thompson's a fifth-year senior. Don Davis is a fifth-year senior. Uh, Corey Jordan's a. a, a He's actually a fifth-year uh, junior. He gray-shirted. Okay, so we're pretty old at that. Um, we're, we're we're looking for you know losing Quentin Sims. And Jeremy was a two last year. Quentin Sims was the one. Uh, now we're looking for you know not only does Jeremy have to raise his level of play, he can play better you know, than what, what he's playing. Uh, you know one of those other guys that got developed into the, to, to the solid two. Okay, now they hadn't had a lot of chances and they haven't. Now we've been moving Jeremy around and stuff, but. Uh, you know, we got to quit doing that. We got to just line up, snap the ball, and everybody's got to be able to execute and get open and get some separation, and make some play. So I'm excited about seeing those guys. I got a lot of confidence in them. They, they just hadn't had a whole lot of opportunities. Uh, but I think you'll, you know, you'll start seeing Don and Chris and Corey show up and you'll know, make a few plays for us. Thanks, coach. Good guys. Perfect.